It's always a good day when I know we're filming the Supra. Something that I've been wanting to do to the Supra, we're finally gonna make happen today. And that is a blackout package, or when I started in the car scene, it was called a murder package, or murdering out your car. There's been a bunch of terms of what this has been called before, but it's essentially just blacking out the car. I know the car looks like it's blacked out right now. Let me show you some areas in which we can improve it. And for the record, I'm gonna be classifying these as mods because there aren't really any mods that exist for this car yet that we haven't done yet. There's no real exhaust systems out yet. There's no real suspension that's out yet other than, you know, the R&D that we're doing on the back setup right now. There aren't really any wheels that are out for this car yet. There's no interior mods. There's really nothing that you can get for this car that is out. Because of that, we have to make do with what we got. And right now, that is doing a blackout package on the car because I'm is itching to do stuff here. So what does the blackout package consist of or what does it consist of in my book? Well, it's gonna be one, as you guys know, we're gonna give it that TJ Hunt special. We're gonna black these windows out, throw on a 5% limo tint on all three windows. And of course, we're gonna do the ceramic tint so we can keep that heat down on the inside. We'll probably throw on like an 80% on the front here just to help with our dash and help keep the car cool. These front amber lights, these gotta go, these don't even light up, I don't think, I'm not sure. But these gotta go, we'll probably put some black vinyl over that. I think on this rear, we might do the same thing, put some black vinyl right there. We'll double check to make sure they don't light up because if they light up and we have vinyl over it, it will look kind of weird at night, you'll kind of see the difference. And lastly, these mirror caps, I'm really on the edge with these. I'm really been on the fence and I've heard a lot from you guys saying you do like them, don't like them. I like them, uh, kind of. Well, the only reason why I do say I do kind of like them is because it's the only real way to look at a car from the exterior and be like, oh, that's a launch edition. It has the red mirror caps. And other than the black wheels, the black wheels came in the launch editions. But other than that, moving forward with this car, nothing really matches the red mirror caps. And because we're gonna be blacking out the windows, you're not gonna be able to see the coral red interior. It doesn't really serve the purpose anymore. On the black, it just doesn't flow as well and it just kind of looks like a clown nose. Like it's just a big red blob right in the middle. I think that the red mirror caps look phenomenal on the white version of the launch edition, but to be honest, on the black one, it really just doesn't do it for me. I think we're gonna go ahead and just vinyl wrap these black. My first choice is the carbon fiber mirror caps, and as I've been saying, it's gonna take a bit, but someone's gonna make a carbon fiber version of this. Well, I just recently figured out that Toyota offers carbon fiber mirror caps for this, but because it was a launch edition that what that you weren't able to get them yet and blah, 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 the reason why I haven't scooped them up is Toyota's asking $950 for carbon fiber mirror caps. One, I thought this was Toyota, not BMW. It says Toyota on it, I expect Toyota pricing. And two, someone on eBay or any aftermarket company is gonna take those, make molds of them and sell them for 200 bucks off the shelf. That's how much they're worth. I'm not gonna overpay for those. So just for now, until we get our carbon ones in, we'll probably just wrap them black. So that's what I wanna do today. As well as we'll probably put some like PPI on the front of the headlights to keep those nice and clean. But something simple, something good, just kind of clean up the overall look of the car and make it a little bit, a little bit different. Stand out just a little bit more. For some reason, I'm kind of torn about these red mirror caps. I'm gonna hate to see them go, but at least at any point, if I really want to, we can just tear off the wrap. With that being said, let's head over to our boys over at Tint World and get this process started. I'm sure this is obvious, but this is like my favorite car at the moment. And I can't remember the last time that I've been this obsessed with a car. The car that this reminds me of is the GTR. And let me tell you why. The GTR when I had it, the reason why I loved it so much is because it was the perfect daily. Like there was no arguing it. It was tall enough that it could fit over anything. It had space to hold whatever you wanted. It was like faster than anything on the road. It was modern, so it had all the technology technology you'd want at the time and it looked amazing and every category this car is that but it's way cheaper and right now and I'm sure you guys are seeing there are some people that are tuning this car to do 10 seconds and a quarter mile like 10.9 which is like insane so the tuning on this car is so crazy and as I've been telling you guys as this car is just out for more and more time as the B58 gets more and more uh, research on on it they're gonna find better ways to tune this car just like the 2JZ and everyone's talking all this crap but really the B58 58 in this car is the perfect power plant and I'm so happy with it. I am so happy with this car. I'm so in love with this car. I'm just excited on what future is gonna be hold with this, with this thing. And a lot of you guys are like, 
pinging comments about the Steph Papadakis B58 teardown. I saw that video within 20 minutes of it going out. If you guys don't know who Steph is, I'm gonna link his channel down below. He's an OG in the game. He's the owner of the team in FD that Osbo races for. And also, if you haven't seen his 2JZ teardown video and rebuilding, definitely check it out. We don't have a tune on the car at the moment, so that's why we have that check engine light. But don't worry, it doesn't matter if we don't have it on right now. This is only partial throttle. Like, I was only in it maybe halfway. But regardless, what I was saying is it doesn't harm the car at all to run this with the new downpipe without the tune. We're just not making the, all the extra power we could without it, but we're gonna install the tune probably tomorrow. That's coming very, very soon. I know a lot of people are looking forward to that just as much as I am. You guys already know Tint World is the place that always does as well. They're located here in Southern California, so if you're in the area, definitely come by this location. This is our hometown spot, but there are plenty of locations of Tint World around, so if you guys are looking to get your windows done or anything of that sort, definitely. That's my recommendation. It's also gonna match the hue of the paint more. Okay, so, so rather than doing black vinyl, we're gonna do the PPF, which is clear bra. So okay. instead of having a clear, like most people know clear, mm -hmm. or they have matte clear bra, this is a new product from S-Tech, which has gloss black. So instead of doing vinyl, which obviously is gonna fail, it's gonna scratch, this will cure itself, it'll last a lot longer, plus protect. So we'll do that on here. Do that on the mirror caps, make these things look like they're factory painted. So just like we did the Ferrari in the front, sure. you wanna do the 80? I really like it. A lot. You were 100% right. Last time we were here with the Ferrari, I was convinced to do an 80% on the front. Helps a lot with the heat. So we'll definitely throw that on yeah, the we'll front. Yeah, we'll do the 80 for you just because obviously with the way they build the dashes and electronics of cars now, you want to protect everything behind 100%. the dash. 100%. So we'll get that on here just so you don't have any visual acuity loss. Yes. You're getting that nice protection. Plus that beautiful blue crisp hue. Yeah, these are like the only mods that we can do at the moment because nothing exists for this. I was telling that to the vlog. I was like, well, I'm going to consider this a mod because there's nothing else out there it at the moment. Mod. You know, you're modding it for your health. There, so. you, there you go, That's right. exactly. Before I filmed this clip, I just filmed a 20 minute session of me doing a Q&A with the mic off. So that's how this video is going so far. I'm gonna answer some Q&As because we haven't done it in a pretty long time. And I feel like it's necessary every now and then. So we're gonna go ahead and answer some questions. It's probably now not gonna be nearly as long as the video I just filmed because I've literally been talking for 20 minutes. So I'll answer a couple questions here and then we'll go pick up Armor 5 Supra. What is your most favorite car to drive? I don't necessarily think I have a favorite. I kind of just drive my cars based on how I'm feeling that day. If I wanna feel like I'm part of the DDE clan, I'll go ahead and I'll take out the 458. If I'm feeling like I want to drive my dream car as a kid growing up, like Fast and Furious vibes, I'll either take my RX-7 or I'll take my Mark IV. If I'm feeling nostalgic and I want to like drive the car that I've been driving forever, I'll drive the B uh, ooh, sorry, I'll drive the BRZ. If I want to drive something modern, I'll take the Mark V. Kind of drive all of them in like week time spans. Like there'll be a week where I'm like obsessed with the 458, and then there'll be like a week where I'm, like I'm obsessed with driving my RX-7 and I'll kind of just like switches off. Or if I get a new mod, I'll go ahead and drive it with a new mod. But I, I think I do a pretty good job of driving all of them equally. I don't drive a different car every single day. I kind of like drive one for a couple days and then switch and so forth. Where do you see yourself in five years? That's a really hard question to ask because in this day and age, everything is always changing because there's always this new stuff coming out, new social media, new opportunities. I guess where I hope to see myself in five years, the biggest thing I'm, that I'm really focusing on right now is Hun Company. I'm doing a lot, a lot of like internal work with our team here. I mean, because everything Hun Company related is done in the shop. Nothing at all is outsourced, which is a lot of the brands out there that, you know, I guess YouTubers have, which is fine that they do everything outsourced, meaning like they don't do anything. They just kind of like promote the product they're given. And we do everything 100% in-house, which I love doing. And there's nothing wrong with doing it another way. Uh, I even did it at one point that way. But for me, I just felt too detached from the brand. I felt like I was selling something that wasn't really mine. Like I want to grow that as big as we can. I think the biggest inspiration I have for that is kind of like Hoonigan in a sense. Like Hoonigan is like, is a brand in the car industry that everybody knows knows no matter what. Whether you like it, you don't like it, they are known. And I want Hunt Company to eventually develop its own pedestal in the car industry and streetwear and just like a car brand in general. But I hope that I spend a lot of time in that and build that up to where I want it to be. I hope that we're still doing what we're doing and we might have like a real production TV show by then. There's a lot of stuff that happens and I've filmed pilots for Netflix, Amazon, with all this stuff. And at any point those shows could get picked up, we just don't know. So it's a hard question to answer, I guess, in my field of profession because you just really never know. The hardest part about starting YouTube, it is having an actual passion to do YouTube, but not doing it for money or views because for the first year or two of you making videos, no one's gonna watch it. And you have to be okay with that and still have the drive to upload stuff if no one cares. Someone asked about the Full Send project. It's coming, I promise. It's coming soon. How do you manage your business while having your friends, slash girlfriend, the employees that ever cause issues for you? How much responsibility are they given? Well, for one, when I'm at home, I'm home and I kind of like don't do anything work-related 
at all. If you guys have noticed in the vlogs, like when you see my house, there's no car stuff anywhere. There's no like YouTube stuff anywhere. It's literally just my house. I, even my garage, like I don't have like a bunch of tools in my garage because I kind of like to keep that like my home life. You know, cars are my life, cars are my living. I eat, sleep, breathe cars. And it's nice, one, to just have some sort of detachment so I don't feel like I'm always living in my workspace. So it's really nice having this place here. It's my playpen really, but you know, it's, it's, it's work. At the end of the day, when I go home, I'm home and that's it. I mean, dealing with friends and working, most people will say it's a terrible idea and for the most part it can be, but it's worked for us and I've had a positive experience with it. You know, there's definitely been hiccups here then, but what's most important and what's worked for us is that when someone is gonna work for you or you're gonna try working together or whatnot, be very, very clear about communication, be 100% transparent, set boundaries and set expectations so you can have something to measure up if someone's not doing enough or someone is doing enough. You know, giving people responsibility with businesses. When I first started everything, I was like super, super close. Meaning like I gave no one responsibility. I kept all the responsibility to myself. And slowly, incrementally, I started like, you know, giving someone a little bit of responsibility, see how they would handle it. And if they did good, you know, I'd give them a little bit more. And if it didn't, I'd pull away. So building that up is what took a while. Testing someone's responsibility level just takes time. When Alicia first started doing stuff with us, she was terrible. And we had to like slow. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It was a related question. But yeah, I mean, it just took time. And eventually you start learning how to handle certain things and learning how to let responsibility go, but definitely takes a lot of time. Hey, I just got my bill for my C8. I just got my, my C8 or full form because I spec'd out a couple days ago, so to the exact spec, and I just got how much it was. Keep this in mind, starting was a $59,000 car, and everyone was like, oh, the C8 is a battle with the Mark V because they're the same price. And I was telling you guys, there is no way those are the, those are in the same price price points at all, so you can't compare them. And I said the C8 probably is gonna be specced out like crazy, it's gonna be a lot of money. How much do you guys think the car is? 76. It's way over $76,000. Are you serious? Oh yeah. 85. More. 90? $90,000. That's how much my, my C8 just got specced to. $30,000 were the base price. So that just proves, I told you guys, yeah. And I could have I could have spec'd it out even more, but I didn't. I, I could have done more. But yeah, that's crazy. The C8 is not a cheap car, and it is not a Mark V competitor. Way different price points. Our Mark V is ready to get picked up, so let's go see it. High five, high five. It's crazy how much different it looks. And I feel like I always say that crap, and I say the same like crap every time, but. Because the only thing that really stood out in this car was the red mirror caps. So yes. Now that they're a beautiful gloss black, it looks so much better, honestly. Yeah, like, the, I was telling the vlog, I, was, I like the red mirror caps because it's the only thing that sets it apart as a launch edition from the exterior. But on the black car, it just doesn't work. I think on the white car, it works a little bit better, with but black with the black, it just doesn't really work. And it looks so much better now. I feel like it's like I'm a Knight Rider, like it's just murdered out. Yeah, it's got the gloss black PPF on the sides for you on the markers, back markers as well. These were actually, we were a little concerned if we were able to do because how much stretch, but we pulled it off. So okay. I actually pulled off the mirror caps yeah. it by hand, yeah. wrapped underneath, and then it's a promoter, it looks perfect. As always, the TJ Hunt, 5% can't see me. Really yeah, <laughs> always, you got to. I like to have a little bit of privacy, that's my favorite. I love that, now it's gonna be nice pitch black on the inside. Oh. Just a nice dark tan on a black car, black accents. I mean, this thing's, like you said, murdered out now, man. It looks super clean. I like how you didn't go overly dark on the windshield, but it just has a nice tone to it. The thing is, with the black car, that already looks really black, it but does. it's not. Especially because you already blacked out the cab and it's a smaller yeah, cab, now it's, it's gonna like restrict the light. Just super so, dark. Just completely dark on the inside. Like I was saying earlier, my biggest thing that I love is that you can be rolling around and people are staring at you and no one can see you. I don't know what it is. It's just one of those things for me. Completely blacked out is the way to go. But I hate that you can't roll your windows down for like three days. The one sacrifice that you do when tinting your windows is you can't roll them down for a bit, which isn't like a terrible thing. I just usually always drive my windows down and now we can't. But at least, hey, we look a little bit different than all the other Supers in the world right now. And the modding list is beginning. Murdered out Mark V, downpipe. We still gotta get our bags fixed up. We still gotta figure out our wheels. And there are a lot more mods coming that I don't really wanna talk about just quite yet. All right, we're at that point in the video. Comment down below. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Is there anything we can improve on? The next thing really to figure out is what wheels want to end up running on this car. And the car's black, so I really feel like you can't run that many different options, like bronze, black, white if you're really bold, and maybe like red if you're like really, really bold. Or we could just do the same setup that we have on the Mark IV and do like a full like polished look. Let me know down below in the comments, Supra Mark V blackout package mod achieved. It's the early stages in the mods, but I'm happy with it and I'm glad we did it. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out and keep moving forward.